All right, so we're going to take a moment and I'm going to do moment of inertia for composite area. So this is again, um, moment of inertia for area, not moment of inertia for mass, which is something totally different. Um, so this is for a cross-sectional area and it's going to be measuring bending. So make sure you got that. So again, cross-sectional area measures your resistance of bending. So the idea is that if you see a picture that say it looks like this, so you've got a beam with a hole in it, this is not what the beam looks like. The beam is like part of a beam this way and you just kind of cut in the middle of it to see what it's looking like. So the question is, um, how can we do this? So um, in other videos we've gone and we've said, okay, well I can find, you know, something for this shape or I can find something for this shape and I can find something for this shape. So basically the idea is if I know kind of some of the standard cross sections, I can combine them kind of carefully in order to get a more complicated cross section. Now, um, we talked about finding moments of inertia for area about different reference ax axes, and this is super important. You absolutely have to find the moment of inertia about the same reference axis before you combine them. And that's like pretty much the most common mistake that people make is if you had a picture that was like a triangle with a circle and a rectangle on it, and this one has an axis about this, well, really it would be like through this way and then this one would have a moment about this way and then this one would be around there and then you try to combine them, you can't. So if you were really going to do something like that, you would have to take this guy and so you'd have to take basically the square and you'd have it here but then you move it down to this reference and then you have this one and you move it down to this reference and then you have this one and you move it down to this reference then you add them all together or subtract them as it were and then that's how you get it so really the only way to mess this up if you're able to do the normal stuff is by trying to add them together um, before you get to the same reference axis so i'm going to show you a little um, example so we're going to use the parallel axis theorem um, which we should already have in order to do this. So, woohoo! So let's say we've got a box. Yay, we have a box. And everything is going to be in millimeters now, which is kind of weird. And the reason for that is that whenever you get to mechanics of materials, everything's in millimeters and like mills and stuff like that, which is like a thousandth of an inch. And it's all silly. And that's just the way it is. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but when you're looking up stuff in tables, a lot of times everything's in quartic millimeters. So let's say I've got this picture. So this is the cross section of the beam. So the beam is really going this way. It's always important to remember. And so I've got some dimensions here. I'll put those in. Okay, and let's say that our goal is to find the moment of inertia for area around the x-axis. And our x-axis will be this little dude down here. So x-axis, yay! Okay, so um, I don't know that there's like a fancy way to do this. Um, so I've kind of made up my own notation. So um, I'm going to start off by finding the part of the, uh, whatever you call it, the rectangly part. So I can either look, look this up on a table or at some point I'll have it memorized. So it's 1 12th base times height cubed. So that's 1 12th times the base is 100, times the height is 150 cubed. Okay, so when you do this, you actually get a pretty big number, this 281, blah, 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 and you could like count these zeros and stuff, but a lot of times your book is actually gonna be in terms of 10 to the sixth um, quartic, thank you, that's exactly what I wanted, quartic millimeters. Um, so if I divide by 10 to the sixth, I can say, well, that's 28.125, so 28.125 times 10 to the sixth quartic millimeters like that. Um, and now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move um, down here. So um, that's, that's not a real notation. It's just how I keep my brain together. So it's going to be that 28.125 again times 10 to the sixth quartic millimeters to the fourth um, times 10 to the sixth, and then I'm gonna move it by the distance, so I have it in the center, right? So I'm gonna move it down here. So that's 75 millimeters, so that's 75 millimeters squared. And then um, the area, so remember that it's delta D squared, 
and then the area. So the delta D is the 75, and then the area, thank you, is um, 100 times 150. So, boop, 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 doo, 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 doo. so um, remember you're always going to be adding. If you're starting from the center, you're always adding. Um, oh, let me put my tongues to the six back then there. I'll go grab my real value. Real value, come back. Okay, I'll let you see what I'm doing. So I'm going to grab the real value, and then I'm going to add 75 squared times 100 times 150. And I've got another big number, which again, I'm just going to divide by 10 to the 6th so that I can see it. So 112.5, so 112.5 times 10 to the 6th quartic millimeters. Okay, so that's a lot of work just to get the rectangle, but it's not nearly as much work as trying to come up with the integral that describes it. So now we're going to do the same thing, but for the circle. So first of all, I'm going to find the circle supposed to go through the center of the circle that's good enough so ideally again at some point you're going to memorize that the circle is 1 fourth pi r to the fourth so that's pi over 4 times the radius 25 to the fourth so um, whatever that ends up to be so we've got pi divided by 4 times 25 to the fourth big number big number oh thank you that's what I wanted um, 30 306 and that's really small so I'm just going to leave it the way it is for the moment 306 796 306796 and that's quartic millimeters and now I'm gonna move this thingy all the way down here okay and so I'm gonna take that 306796 and I'm gonna add the distance and the distance is this 100 here squared 100 squared times the area of a circle which I know because I'm kind of awesome it's pi r squared, oh, and r is 25, so I can do that. Look at me knowing the area of a circle, and they said it couldn't be done. So that plus 100 squared, so this number is going to get bigger quick because we're moving it by so much, um, times 25 squared, and everything's still in quartic um, thingies. Oh, and see, look, it's actually giving it to me in terms of times 10 to the 7th because it recognizes that it's giving me a big, giant number. So again, I'm going to divide by 10 to the 6th. Um, so I've got 19.94. So 19.94 times 10 to the 6th quartic millimeters. Okay, now this is again not real notation, but it's just stupid notation that I use because it helps my brain work. So basically if I'm going to do of the system down there, um, it would be the individual square minus the circle but from the same location. So this is really the most important part of this example is that this locations are all the same reference axis. Um, so I've got the 112.5 minus 1994, and now they're both in 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth, so whatever that ends up being. Ba -ba 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 -ba, probably some number, that would be my guess. All right, 92.6. So 92.6 quartic millimeters. Now, if for some reason it asked me to find it at the center of mass, so um, the center of mass, remember, so is going to be like somewhere here, right? So if I'm looking to find it in the center of mass, remember that if I'm going back to the center of the mass, I can't just do this and blah, 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 blah. I can't do the... Um, that was not helpful. I can't do parallel axis theorem normal. I have to do parallel axis theorem special um, because what the truth is is not that this is equal to this plus something. What's true, um, because remember we always have to be, the parallel axis theorem assumes that you're starting from the center. So actually the parallel axis was assuming that I'm starting um, at the center, wherever the center has to be, and I change some distance times some area, and then that puts me in the new position. So if I was going to be moving this to the center of mass of the location, wherever it happens to be, I don't feel like messing with it right now, um, but really the equation that you'd be looking for is out of the center of mass, that's going to be down at the x-axis, um, 
minus, oh, I forgot the squared, minus the delta d squared times a. So you always got to remember when you're using parallel axis theorem that the center of massy part is the one that gets added to stuff because that's always the smallest number. It's always the easiest to bend around the um, axis that goes through the center of mass. So you're always going to be increasing from there. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea about how to mess with this going forward.